So paper folding. Paper folding is a technique that involves folds, pleats, or creases to influence a surface. A fold line, designated here with the uh, dashed blue line, is really something that we like to think of as a material event, a kind of action, something that has potential embedded in just the line itself. When you have multiple fold lines and the folding process begins, you can very quickly develop a series of components which can be aggregated and attached to one another to form a much larger expansive surface. The qualities of which, um, the textures, etc., cetera, um, typically exceed uh, the potential of any of those individuals on their own. So it's really quite a, a nice technique because it relies on something very simple, um, like a small folded element that when compounded and arrayed produces a much greater um, effect than it could on its own. Here you can see some of the qualities of a uh, surface. Um, this is for something that Gil and I um, have worked on in the past. And you can see that there are you know, fold lines and dashes that are indicating um, some things about directionality. You see that they do attach and form a continuous surface. The surface is made structural by the various folds or pleats um, that exist within um, the arrays. So the opportunities for folding with regards to design are quite, quite large. The first is that each folded element contains a very clear design parameter or set of design parameters. Which way do you fold? Do you fold up? Do you fold down? Right? What angle are you folding on? Now folding introduces structural forces to the surface. So something which might be um, uh, flimsy or not structured before can be made structural um, through introducing folds or pleats into the surface itself. Small parts easily manageable, equal large assemblies, which are seemingly more complex. And the structure of pattern making itself is actually analogous to the structure of data and the way that grasshopper and parametric systems operate with the various types of data structures um, that are really the backbone of that parametric environment. And my personal fav favorite is that the concepts, these, these seemingly abstract concepts, are easily understood through tactile experimentation. So things which could be very difficult to grasp um, are rendered quite accessible just by the nature of the tactility of its interface. So when we're talking about something like paper folding within the world of parametric design, we have found a really nice tool called paneling tools. Um, which helps us to work with some of these ideas um, within the context of um, the really user-friendly environment, Grasshopper. So what we're really talking about when we talk about Grasshopper and paneling tools is parametric design plus grid-based modeling. Paneling tools is really a grid-based modeling tool. So Grasshopper as we all know is a node-based algorithm editor which is integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools. And it allows users to define logical relationships between multiple design parameters which constitute or define a parametric model. So a parametric model is really just a model wherein the parts of a design relate and are capable of change in a coordinated way as defined by the various parameters and dependencies stated by you, the end user, the designer. So when we see something like this, this is a, a very simple um, folded motif. You can see on the um, XY plane the dash lines indicating where folds would occur. A parameter such as height deviation, the width of the motif, and the depth of the motif um, are really the parameters which yield um, the ultimate kind of design motif or three-dimensional folded motif. 
And so Grasshopper is really quite fantastic because not only is it a great tool for visual programming um, as well as parametric design, but it's easily expanded through a host of add-ons. And Gil and I have already covered quite a few different add-ons for Grasshopper, things like um, Weaverbird, um, Kangaroo. Um, we've worked with the uh, Python component within Grasshopper to add in Python scripting. And one, yet another great add-on for Grasshopper um, is paneling tools. And so paneling tools is a plugin that helps generate 2D and 3D cellular patterns and populate them over rectangular grids. Here at the bottom right, you can see the icon for paneling tools, um, where you get this kind of net of points, a grid of points, and um, a connected um, uh, matrix of lines that are running through there, um, which is referred to as a panel. So the, sorry, that should say, um, that should say uh, paneling tools component, uh, supports intuitive design of paneling concepts as well as rationalization of complex geometry into a format that is suitable for analysis as well as fabrication. And the plugin is closely integrated with Rhino 4 and 5 and is really widely used for architectural as well as other building designers. So before we get started, the first thing we really need to do is download and install um, paneling tools. So let's bounce over and take a look at um, the installer. So go right over here. Actually, the installer seems to be MIA. So, so um, if you've already downloaded it, and if you could please uh, just go ahead and post a question uh, if you haven't uh, gained access to the paneling tools uh, plugin yet or the installer yet, and we'll direct you to the correct link. Here you can see at the top, in the top right, um, the link directly to the group where you can find paneling tools. But when you um, run the installer, one thing that's really great is that the plugin will automatically install in Rhino as well as Grasshopper. So unlike some other add-ons um, for Grasshopper where you have to kind of manually go in there and add it, um, just by double-clicking the installer, it will go ahead and um, install in both um, Rhino as well as Grasshopper. Now, I'm going to bounce over to, Grass or to Rhino really quick and verify that, yes, um, I do now have, after installing paneling tools, um, the menu here. And you can see that what's nice is that Paneling Tools does have um, Rhino functionality, so you can use it in Rhino, and we'll see in just a moment that it also has Grasshopper functionality, so we can use it in both environments. And there's, as well, um, a link in the uh, tool set in Grasshopper that allows you to reference um, panels, uh, paneling grids from Rhino and bring them directly into uh, Grasshopper, which is really fantastic. Now, the paneling tools toolbar may not automatically install for you. And so here I can see my toolbar, paneling tools, um, is correctly installed um, in the uh, toolbar up here. But if it isn't for you, um, you can go to tools and just bounce right here to toolbar layout and just go file open. Now, when you open, right, you'll see that the, um, the place that you need to browse to um, will be the directory listed here. You can see this is uh, me, uh, my app data, roaming, McNeil, Rhino 5, plugins, paneling tools. It's a little bit long and cumbersome. Um, but typically, whenever you go to file open from the toolbar layout, what you'll find is that it's going to open almost to that location. It's going to open basically to Rhino 5. So you can just double click the plugin folder and then right into paneling tools and you'll find it. Um, the file will actually look like this, .rui. So that's a Rhino user interface. And what it'll end up doing for you is opening that toolbar right here. 
Now, in Rhino, there are um, quite a few tools um, that you can use with paneling tools, and Grasshopper has not yet, or at least uh, the programmer from McNeil who developed uh, paneling tools, Raja Issa, has not yet got around to adding everything into Grasshopper. Um, so, you know, you have um, quite a few of these tools, not all of them, though. 